Come with me guys, let's make this simple kimono top. This is very quick and easy to make. As a matter of fact, you can make this within 15 minutes. It is very beginner friendly. And the beautiful thing about this top is that you can alter the pattern into a shirt. You can add in collar. You can add like a band around the sleeve M. You can add a band around the waist. You can add like an elastic band to give it this puffy effect. The possibilities are just endless. So guys, if this is something you'd like to see, keep on watching. To begin, come down to inches from the top of your pattern paper and square out horizontal line. This is the top line. So if you're going to use this for like a shirt, you want to fold in three inches as your button extension from the edge of your pattern paper. If not, you can go ahead and skip out this step. By the way, my tape is not complete, so I'm going to be starting all measurements from the one inch mark. Now from the top line, I'm going to mark down my waist length of 17 inches plus one inch for blousing. So as to create that puffy effect if I need to tuck in this top or use elastic around the waist, okay? Now I'm going to square across a horizontal line. This is the M of the top. Now from the top line, I'm going to mark down my ammo depth plus four inches for ease. So for a small to medium size, you can use nine inches for your ammo depth. For larger sizes, you can use 10 inches. So that means I'm measuring 13 inches from the top line to get my bust line, okay? So now I'll go ahead and square out our horizontal line. Now on the top line, I'm going to mark in the neckline width of three inches. This is standard. Now from the top line, I'm going to mark down the neckline depth for the front five inches. Using my French curve, I'm going to connect both points to form the neckline. Next, I'm going to mark on the top line from center front, my across shoulder divided by two. And then I'm going to come down from this point one and a half inches to get the shoulder slope line. Next, I'm going to square out a short horizontal line. Now I'm going to measure from center front along this short guideline, my cross shoulder divided by two again, and then connect that point to the neck point to form the shoulder seam. Now for an alternative neckline, if you want to use this for a shirt, you can make the front neckline depth three inches to three and a half inches. Now for the back neckline, use one inch as the neckline depth. Okay guys, now from this point, I need to mark out the sleeve length. So for the sleeve length for this tie, you're going to use one third of your full sleeve length. My full sleeve length is 24 inches, so one third is going to be 24 divided by three, so which is eight inches. Now I'm going to extend out from this point eight inches. So to do this, I'm going to position my ruler along the shoulder seam line and mark out from this point eight inches. Now I'm going to measure from this point just to be sure that I have eight inches. Next from center front along the bust line, I'm going to mark my bust divided by four plus one inch for ease. You want to repeat the same on the M line and then connect both points together. Now from center front, I'm going to measure to the end of the sleeve. Okay, whatever I get, I'm going to place it on the bust line. Now I'm going to connect both points together. Moving on, I'm going to take the measurement from the neck point to the sleeve length and mark the midpoint. Once that is done, I'm going to come down from this point on the sleeve opening line and mark down half of an inch. Now using my French curve, I'm going to connect all three points together. Next, you want to come in on the bust line two inches. Now you want to connect these two points together to form the actual opening of the sleeve. Next, you want to come in on the waistline from the sideline one inch. Then you want to use your French curve and connect both points together like so. 
the top is actually done. But let's say you want to add elastic band to the waist, then you need to create an elastic band casing. So you want to come down one and quarter inches from the waistline. The one and quarter inches is for a one inch wide elastic band. Next, you want to add in half inch M allowance to that. So now go ahead and trim off the excess paper. Now you want to fold in the M allowance, that is the half inch M allowance. And then you want to go back in and fold in the elastic band casing. Now go ahead and add in all your seam allowance all around the pattern, the neckline, the shoulder. Just add your seam allowance everywhere and then trim off the pattern. So if you're going to use this for like a shirt, you need to flip open that button extension and then create a double fold of one inch. Once that is done, you want to trim off the excess around the neckline. So this is what your pattern should look like if you're going to use it for a shirt. So you need to have that button extension for a shirt. But I will not be using this for a shirt, so I'm going to fold back in the button extension, okay? And then I'm going to go ahead and transfer this to my fabric. Okay guys, so for the M of the sleeve, I decided to increase the M allowance to one inch, okay? Because I'll be creating a double fold on the M of the sleeve. So the M allowance around the sleeve is one inch and the M allowance for the top around the waist is one inch because there will be no elastic band, okay? All right, guys, so I cut out two pieces. So one piece for the back, the other piece for the front. So I'm going to take the piece for the front and then trim down the neckline. So by the way, I increased the front neckline from five inches to five and quarter inches. Okay, so this is just personal preference for me. Now with right side facing right side, I'm going to join both pieces together and then take it to my sewing machine and sew around the shoulder and then sew also around the side seam. When you sew in a lace fabric like this, um, you cannot really use an overlocker around the seam allowance. So one thing you can do is to trim down that seam allowance to like quarter of an inch, which was exactly what I did. Okay. So guys, I've gone ahead to fold in the M of the sleeve and the M of the top, and then I gave the top a good press. The next step is to finish the neckline. So for this, I cut out a bias strip of one and a half inches wide. Okay. So I first of all cut one that is sufficient to go around the front neckline. And then I added half inch seam allowance. Then I repeat the same for the back neckline. Now I'm going to join both pieces together with quarter of an inch and press that seam open. Next, I'm going to be attaching this to the neckline of the top, matching the shoulder seam to the seam on the bias strip. So guys, I've gone ahead to sew it with quarter of an inch and I gave it a good press. Now I'm going to measure from the seam line out on the bias strip. So I'm going to measure out one inch and then trim off the excess. So once that is done, I'm going to be creating a double fold and turn the bias tape over to the neckline and then do a top stitch. So guys, the top is done. This is what the neckline looks like after finishing the neckline. Okay. Well, I hope you find this video helpful. If you do remember to leave a comment, like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet subscribed. Thank you so much guys for watching. I'll see you on my next one. Bye bye. I for love. Come give me read the make a love you. Yeah.